Hey everybody, what's up? This is Tim Michael with the secondary channel, Tim Michael Arts 2, my cell phone channel, the Tim and Shay Chronicles, and sometimes product reviews. This is the QR Ladybird. This is version 2. I'm really excited to show you guys this little thing. This is uh, my smaller quadcopter. It's brand new, and um, I've only had it about maybe three or four days, and this is a really cool little bug. Um, I don't know why they call it the ladybird, bird, but it's got a ladybug design on it. But anyway, it is very small, very lightweight, comes with a nice controller, a Devo 4, um, and uh, there's, there's some other specifics that I'll tell you about while I'm flying it, okay? So let me go ahead and get the battery attached, switch the camera over into another position so that you guys can see uh, the flight time and how this works. Alright guys, well real quick before I fly it and hopefully before the storm hits, I'm going to do just a quick showing up close showing of this guy. The, like I said, this is the QR Ladybird version 2. Uh, supposedly version 1 wasn't as smooth, version 2 is a little better. Uh, supposedly the, the hard programming in it is a little better. I, the way you turn it on is by putting this battery in here. They got a slot specifically for the battery, which is pretty uh, pretty sturdy. It holds it nice and tightly. Now, I'll warn you, if you're flying really fast or if you crash or whatever, that battery can pop out and you can lose it. To connect it, you have to put these two connectors together. The uh, bottoms of these uh, stems have a nice hard edge on, uh, well, sorry, bouncy edge, kind of like a... Um, Pen, uh, pen tip for a tablet, and then the uh, propellers are, you know, uh, very thin rubber. And actually, if you take a look at this propeller here, it might be kind of hard to see. I've nearly broken this one, and yet it still seems to fly perfectly. Well, the rain's coming, so let's go ahead and try and get up in the air before it gets too wet. All right, guys. Well, the rain has temporarily stopped. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give you a demonstration of this uh, Ladybird version 2. Now, just to let you know, you plug it in, and that's what powers it on. It blinks a couple times while you're waiting for it to blink. You turn on this switch here. It binds to the uh, Ladybird, and then it's ready to fly. There's a little bit of a breeze kicking in because we have some storm coming in, but I can go ahead and give you a quick flight and let you see how it is. This is set on high rates right now. Um, high rates means that it can really move really fast according to my moves. So we'll go ahead and take it off and I'll show you a quick demonstration of the high and low rates. I'm running it at about 40, um, I'd say 40% right now, 40-50% with all the wind and things like that. It's a little shaky right now. I'm, I'm willing to guess that's because of that propeller on the one side. Usually it's smooth as silk. And um, I mean I'm very trusting with it. It's flying right next to me and I'm not too worried about it. The controls are very nice. Let me switch it into low rates, just a click of a button on my Devo 4 controller, and you'll see that it smooths down really nice. And it makes it even smoother to control, I can get a lot more handling on it. If I need to trim it, which could certainly be the case here, um, I can do that directly from my controller. There's also a little uh, screw in there that I can readjust uh, to adjust the gyros in the system to keep it, keep it upright so the props handle properly. Let me bring it down here. But what I really wanted to demonstrate for you guys was the speed of this little guy. I mean, right now, at this set in low rates, he flies pretty quick. And the controls are really, like I said, really good. I'd say the only negative in the low rates is its uh, yaw radius. So let me go ahead and see if I can get it in front of the camera. And here's a yaw. That's a very slow, tedious yaw. So if I want to get quick control of it, I really can't at that rate. Now, there is a benefit, though, in the high rates. It does take a little bit of learning um, in the high ratios to be able to understand how to quickly control your yaw with your roll um, and with the quadcopter. Let me land it here. Oops. All right, now, like I said before, guys, if you do happen to crash it, the battery might slip out of its casing, which it did here. So I'm going to go ahead and slide it right back in. It's a very sturdy helicopter or quadcopter, so I'm not too worried about damaging it. Plus, it's got this nifty little, you know, ladybug casing to the top of it, which will uh, keep it pretty well protected in case of a incident, you know. you got to be careful with your wires. They are very um, thin, and you don't want to break them, but I'm uh, just trying to do this quickly. All right, so by hitting the little DR button on the top here, that switches it to high rates. Now it's going to fly a lot faster. It's going to have a lot more speed in its moves, so you have to be a little bit more careful when you're controlling it around you or around other people. As you can see, the control is much more, uh, much thicker. And I'm going to see if I can put some speed into its turns and things, give you a little bit of idea of a better control. If you take a look there, 
That's a yaw. I'll do one in front of the camera a little better here. It takes a little bit more practice to understand how to control it, but here, momentarily, it's a yaw. You can see that's a little bit quicker if you're able to catch it on camera. You can see that's pretty quick. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and... Whoa! I'm going to go ahead and get it back in the camera and put some speed into it and give you an idea of how fast this sucker can really get moving. So hopefully you guys can see it in the shot. Here we go. You can get some pretty quick speed from it. And you can correct pretty quick too if you have any experience with quadcopters in the past. A uh, nice thing is it's just a matter of turning your yaw to get the rotation and then angling the nose forward. Now the negative with this little chopper, as much as I love it, is that its props are, um, oh that was cool, the props in the front, the props that would help you understand how to guide your little quadcopter are black. And the ones in the back are orange. Let me bring that in and show that to you. Okay, so like I said, the props in the front here are black. The ones in the back are orange. You can't switch them because they are purposefully designed. If you take a look, lift is created by spinning the quadcopter this way, and lift is created by swinging that one the opposite direction. So it creates a lift instead of a turn. So when you're keeping that in mind, don't try and switch them because if you do, your helicopter is going to go smashing down into the ground because of the reversal of the engines. All right, here we go. We'll take it off again. I'll do a little bit more flight. And as you can see, I mean, I can get some really fancy control in here. Now, there is another mode that you need to know about. Sorry, I'm getting way out of camera here, obviously. And uh, the other mode that you can set this in will cut you if you're not careful. <laughs> um, the settings to be able to change that over are a little technical, and in the manual they actually have the settings backwards. So if you read the manual and you're trying to figure out how to put it into mode 2, which is a stunt mode, then uh, you've got to be careful because you will cut yourself. i got three little cuts right here from where my helicopter or ch quadcopter in my studio literally took off and cut me three times while I wasn't expecting it. Um, the other mode allows you to do back flips, front flips, side flips, but the gyros don't put in nearly as much um, uh, effort, which means that you need to correct by yourself. Uh, that's a big negative in my personal opinion because when I... Whoa, when I look at having a quadcopter, I look at the idea of maybe putting a camera on it or something like that. So I don't really need it for the stunts. I like it for the speed, but not so much for the stunts. So anyway, I'll fight a little bit more here. I do like the high rates. I can do it in low rates, and I only do low rates inside. Uh, and here's low rates again. I'll just switch that over here. And low rates gives you a lot more control around tighter areas. I can fly this in my garage, in my bedroom, in my studio, um, in the kitchen, you know, wherever I can get away with it and people don't get too mad at me. And you can see that I can hold it like pretty much right in my face without having to worry too much about getting into any kind of trouble with its blades. Uh, if you understand how to fly remote control type stuff, whether it's a helicopter or it's an airplane or it's a quadcopter, you'll do yourself a big favor. I'll go ahead and reset my battery here so my center of gravity is pretty straightforward. And then I'll do one more flight with the high rates until the battery dies and uh, we'll be good to go, okay? So I hit my little button for the high rates, we're off, and off we go. Pretty high speed of rate of climb, that's for sure. And, oh, oh. Alright, I lost it. I lost it bad. I'm going to try and crash it. Well, guys, I hope that you enjoyed that product review of the QR Ladybird version 2. I know I did, until I crashed it. That's right, it's somewhere out there, probably up in a tree, and I can't find it. So there you go. That is the end of my product review. If you guys are curious about any other products, go ahead and send them to me. Or send me some money to buy them. For instance, a new QR, because that was a really fun little toy. All right, God bless you guys. I'll see you next time right here on the Tim and Shay Chronicles. Tim Michael Arts 2 and all of my cool little product reviews that go missing into trees.